Hey, it's Emily. Can we have a heart to heart real quick? I just wanted to let you know that I see you and gosh, I know that you've tried every diet and you're just over dieting in general, right? And maybe you've been a long time listener of the show and have implemented some of the habit hacks I've shared here, but you just haven't been able to be consistent due to, well, life and overwhelm. It's not your fault your habits haven't been sticking for you. You just need to do them differently. You need a habit strategy catered towards you, a busy working mom who knows the value of taking care of her health, but you just need a simple system to create habits that don't feel overwhelming and give you back the energy you need and deserve. So it's time to take action and this is it. You know, my years of being a fitness professional and training moms in particular, I saw a gap between Knowing, you know, that we need to work out, eat healthy, and talk nice to ourselves, and actually doing it. Our day-to-day life is just so unexpected due to the invisible load that we carry that it has just been impossible to make your healthy habits stick. That's where the Healthy Habits Accelerator pod course comes into play. I created my signature program with you in mind, ensuring you'll finish it. It's an audio course, and I know you'll be able to complete it on the go in the car pickup line or even taking a shower. In just 10 episodes that you can easily binge in just a day or two, you'll leave with a 21-day plan to build momentum in your habits and Feel good in your favorite leggings too. And this is all without dieting. Now, this is higher level habit strategy where we dig deeper into my atomic habit hacking system for women to address diet culture mentality, emotional eating, time, and family challenges with food, chaos, disorganization, confidence, self-care, consistency, and sustainability in your workouts and time and convenience habit hacks, and so much more. This is based off of research, client testimonials, and conversations with you all as far as your biggest healthy habit challenges that you have. We will cover it in the pod course. Plus, I just added two bonus trainings and 150 habit loops to help inspire you to create your own. And we even do bi-monthly group coaching calls when you need my eyes on your habit loops to help you continue taking action. Now, you'll leave with my Habit Hacking Trifecta 21-day plan that is going to give you the confidence that you can make your habits stick and train for life and really just fall in love with the process of making your health an automatic habit that you don't even have to think about even more. And since I love my podcast listeners so much, and to celebrate you, I want to give you $20 off of the Healthy Habits Accelerator pod course. Just go to bit.ly slash healthy habits pod course, and just use the code podcast at checkout to get $20 off. It's linked in the show notes for you as well. I am so rooting for you, girlfriend. Okay, let's get into the show. Hey girl, do you wish you could make your healthy habits stick, but life keeps getting in the way? Are you tired of diet culture telling you to shrink yourself when you'd rather just find true food freedom, move your body for joy, and feel and look good in your favorite leggings? Then you're in the right place. Think of this as atomic habits for women. Hey, I'm Emily Nichols, habit and fitness coach, millennial mom, and Taco Tuesday enthusiast. I'm here to tell you there is an easier way than what we've been taught about health and our habits. How do I know? Because I've gone from former chronic dieter to habit hacker through the power of this system that I'm now going to teach you so you can finally stop dieting and just train for life via your habits. Remember, it's not your fault your healthy habits haven't stuck. We just have to do them differently. Are you ready to have it hack your health? Then let's do this. You're listening to episode 254 of Habit Hack Your Health. Hey girl, welcome back to the show. I am so happy you are here, whether I'm in your earbuds as you're taking a walk, you're doing the dishes, or you're being mom Uber and you're listening together with your kids while you're driving them around town. 
I'm so glad and grateful that you chose to listen today, and I want you to take action as well, okay? We just don't listen, we take action, and that's how habit hacking works, right? You know what you need to do when it comes to your health. You just need a system, and that's what we teach here. So thank you for being here. If you love the show, I would so be forever grateful if you would leave a five-star rating and written review. You could literally do it while we're talking in this episode today in iTunes. It really allows me to see what you love the most about the show and also allows more mamas to find the show as well. Now, when it comes to habit hacking, we talk about our three fundamental needs here, your mindset, your movement, and food freedom. Now, I've done surveys. I've had countless conversations with clients, folks that take my course, just me living my own life as well. And we address some really specific challenges via habit hacking in those three areas. And I address those in depth with some more customized, higher level habit hacking inside of my signature program, the Healthy Habits Accelerator. So go grab it. It's linked in the show notes and it's audio. I made it with you and mine, girl. You can listen to it (laughs) um, and take the action steps from it in the program as well. But when it comes to the fundamental need of mindset, aside from confidence and guilt-free taking care of yourself and time, the other challenge I see the most is the chaos. The chaos that we feel, the disorganization of just life in general. You got a lot of tabs open, girl, and I get you. I do too in my own head and on my laptop as well. And maybe you feel like it's all just spilling over into your home, your garage, your car, your purse, oh my goodness, everywhere, right? Sometimes our home and the areas we spend the most time in can really truly be a reflection of how our minds feel a lot of the time. And just to be a little vulnerable with you here, you know, maybe for you, you sit at your desk at work, whether it's in an office or an in-home office, and it's cluttered, right? You just went through a huge launch, and there's a lot of post-its everywhere, a coffee cup from last week with a little coffee in it still, pens everywhere, random papers, and who knows what else. I just described my desk to you, (laughs) if I'm being truly honest. But okay, let's, let's talk about on the flip side of that. How awesome does it feel when you tidy it up? You just clean up just a little bit. It's like a clean slate, right? It's like uncluttering your mind and it allows you to focus more, right? You feel a lot more productive when you have a clean space in front of you. Now, there is something to say about decluttering that it can for sure feel very overwhelming and daunting when you're in the thick of it, right? My desk, my car, my clothes in my closet. Hello, floor drobe. Have you ever heard of a floor drobe? This is what I do, okay? <laughs> so I have clothes that aren't quite dirty. They aren't quite um, ready to be put in the in the, la- the dirty laundry. I wore them maybe just a little bit. Um, my ADHD mind just wants to put it on the floor. And I create a floor drobe of clothes that I sometimes wear and cycle through throughout the week that aren't quite dirty yet, right? <laughs> and... That can feel really overwhelming and it can pile up. And for me to go in my closet and be like, okay, I need to clean this up. Sometimes I just won't do it because I'm just like, that is just too overwhelming. Okay. So let me know if you feel me on this. (laughs) We've kind of got ourselves into a pickle, into a bind where we're trying to lose the overwhelm around decluttering. So today we're going to help you do that. We're going to talk to a decluttering expert to make this super simple for you because in order for a habit to stick, right, it has to be super small. And in order to overcome the chaos, the clutter and disorganization, we have to have some simple decluttering habits in place. Indiana Gates from Wanna Be Clutter Free is here and she's going to help us do just that. 
Deanna is the host of Want to Be Clutter Free, like I just mentioned. She helps busy families learn how to let go of the stuff holding us back so we can stop spending our entire weekend cleaning the house and start enjoying more time together, right? She has such a positive attitude. She's very down to earth, and she has just exploded this podcast to be a top 1% podcast from all over the world, with expert guests, tips, tricks from her own experiences, and she has helped women from all of the, all over the world discover the freedom that comes from living clutter-free. She is such a sweetheart, you guys, and gives some really simple tools to help you create some habit loops around tidying up, decluttering that doesn't feel overwhelming, but rather Green, right? You are going to love this episode. Make sure to stick around till the end for my top three biggest takeaways. Are you ready? Okay, let's go talk to Deanna. All right, gang. Thank you so much again for tuning in to Habit Hack Your Health. I am so excited to introduce you to our guest today, Deanna Yates of Wanna Be Clutter Free. Yes, that's me. Deanna, welcome to the show. Hey, Emily. Thanks for having me. Okay. I know we're going to dig super deep into this, but the first question I ask every guest is what is your favorite habit hack? Ooh, well, the question is in what, in anything, anything, it could be anything. personal health, wellness, mm. your home, your kids, anything. So my personal favorite way to look at habits is to make them a non-negotiable. Take mm-hmm. out all of the barriers of like the if or that or and or 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 just make it something you do and it's just like, oh, of course I do it. That's just who I am. That's the person I am. The way we look at brushing our teeth, you don't question whether you're going to brush your teeth in the morning or at night before you go to bed. So that's the way we should look at, oh, no, of course I'm going to do the laundry because it's laundry day. Or, of course, I'm going to pick that thing up because that's just what I do. So I like to just have that little mindset shift. It's not too like a super hack, but it's just once you can say it's that's just it. That's all I do. Like bedtime for our daughter is at this time. So there's no negotiation. There's no room for that rationality or, you know, I don't even know if that's the right word, if that's the correct word I'm supposed to be saying. But when you can just say, it's like, no, that's it. It's so much easier to commit and to do something, even if we don't want to do it. You know, I kind of liken that too. We just did an episode talking about like being more like childlike, like when we're (laughs) helping our kids when they're really little to like brush their teeth or potty train, like it's a non-negotiable. We need to help them learn how to make that be a habit in their lives. And we can employ that same type of mentality as an adult in areas of our life to make our area or make our lives a little more simple. Yeah. Oh, I totally parent myself. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I need like my mom calling me like, now did you fold your laundry today? I'm like, mom, leave me alone. No, just kidding. Um, okay. Well, Deanna, can you tell us a little bit about yourself really briefly about who you are, and what has led you to what you do today? Sure. Well, so my name is Deanna Yates, and I do have a podcast, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, So where did I get to today? I mean, we now live in San Diego, California. My husband's from Iowa, um, and we met in Texas. We have lived all over. I mean, I think we've moved 16 times in 20 years, so we have lived in lots of different places. Um, We've always been very entrepreneurial. We've never kind of let the idea of, well, that's how it's supposed to be kind of get in our way. And I'm really start actually after COVID, that was when it started to get a little hard for me to kind of forget that mentality. So Mm -hmm. I'm really trying to get back into that gumption of just like, no, we're just going to go do it. Like why let anything hold us back? But we've lived in Europe twice. We've um, and we've always just moved because we wanted to move to those places. It was never really because a job was taking us there. So that's a little bit about me. I'm a little bit of a like adrenaline junkie a little bit. I've hang glided. I've bungee jumped. I've done trapeze. I've done all that kind of stuff. So I really have always just wanted to be able to live life and not let stuff or circumstances hold me back. And so that's, I think, where the first that first level of stuff getting in my way kind of hit me. We traveled when our daughter was one years old, we traveled uh, over to Europe for six months and we sold 80% of everything we owned. 
Mm. And then we came back and we settled down. We did the thing we're supposed to do. And we bought the house and we didn't have anything, right? We had sold everything. It all fit in a five by eight container. That was all we had left. And so friends gifted us stuff and we thrifted stuff and we, you know, bought new stuff. And soon enough, we had a three bedroom house with a back den playroom that was filled with stuff. And we had just spent six months traveling around with carry-on suitcases. Actually, I think that time we did actually have one big suitcase because we had a baby and we had a travel crib in it, you know. Um, So it was just like this stark contrast of we were able to live and be happy and just have a regular life without much stuff. And now we have this whole house and I feel so claustrophobic and hemmed in and I'm supposed to feel free and I it's just felt so crazy. And so anyway, that was kind of the first moment of like, I don't actually need all this stuff. I've got to figure out how to pare it down. We ended up moving again um, that time for a job in Chicago uh, where I had worked before. And it was that moment of like, we're being very intentional. We're going to, you know, set what we have in our house. We're going to like really carve out what we have. We're going to, you know, if we don't use it, we're getting rid of it. And so that's kind of how I came to this moment of, decluttering and organizing and minimalism and letting go. Um, but I've always kind of been that person of just like, you want to try it? Sure. Let's do it. (laughs) So that gives you a little bit of background on me. (laughs) I love it so much. Well, that's interesting to kind of be so self-aware like that being able to travel with little and then coming home. It's just, I feel like our human nature just to be like, now I need to fill it with all the things and all of the stuff. And I think a lot of times, especially as busy working moms, we're trying to <laughs> fill a void with all of this stuff. Or like we were talking about, we talked about so, so much on the show, we have all these tabs open and it feels a little chaotic and then clutter happens and you just don't know how did we get here so quickly mm-hmm. too? So why does clutter happen so much for us? Well, you touched on a couple things right there. First is guilt, right? We feel guilty and we want to bring stuff in because we're trying to fill that void, whether that is we think. So for me personally, coming back from that first stint of travel with a one-year-old, we obviously couldn't have very many toys with us if we had one suitcase and a couple carry-on backpacks, right? You can't travel with the big toys and all of that stuff. So a lot of that came from, well, isn't she supposed to have this stuff? A lot of other people's expectations, Mm -hmm. not tapping into our own innate beliefs of, and just feelings of what do we actually need to be fulfilled? Um, Watching, uh, you know, other people. So it's really interesting. We've got friends uh, visiting right now and they have some teenagers and they're so into TikTok and Instagram and they are not from the States. And so, you know, we're going to Target and we're looking for the Stanley Cup and we're going to crumble cookies and we're eating the cookies. And it's so interesting to see these influences that Mm -hmm. we have. So our inputs, right? What we're watching, who we're listening to, all of that really affects our own you know, mental capacity and what we look for, what we want. So one of the things I tell people to do is get rid of catalogs. Like I think catalogs are on their way out, but if you still have catalogs coming, you know, the, the digital equivalent obviously are emails. So unsubscribe from marketing emails, get, go to catalogchoice.org and unsubscribe from these catalogs. One of the places we moved into, I'm not kidding you. I had a stack this big. I mean, it's like six inches in like a month of catalogs from the people that lived there before because they can keep delivering them to the resident, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> it took me probably two solid months of trying to unsubscribe from all of these catalogs, but I finally did it. So it is possible. You can get off the list, I promise. Um, but you know, all of that input, you didn't even know you wanted that thing. And then suddenly it's in your inbox and you're thinking, oh my gosh, now I have to have it. It's so cute. And I get it, right? We want, we think that that next little dopamine hit, we think that next little purchase is going to be the thing that makes us happy when it's not at all. And it's so counterintuitive because it does make you happy for a short, brief while. And so it's really hard to stop that habit of buying, of that impulse buy. So I think that's why clutter starts. We aren't really 
taking a moment to pause before the purchase and we're not really thinking, where will I put this? Do I really need this? Do I have something that already fulfills this purpose? If you're buying something to feel good, that's okay. Mm -hmm. If you understand that that's why you're buying it, right? I'm buying this thing because, you know what? I had a really bad day. I had a really bad week. I'm really tired. If you start to put that on it, you're going to start to then have a moment of like, oh, okay. So I bought that thing, but it didn't actually save me time. It didn't actually make me feel better. I was, I felt better for 15 minutes, but in the long term, I didn't feel good because now I have the guilt of having this thing in the corner and not knowing where to put it or not what, knowing what to do with it. Got to move it around, all that kind of stuff. But if you can just start with that moment of awareness, I think can really help us pull back on the clutter. Sorry, I went a little bit deeper on then why do we have the clutter? I just went on, let's just fix it all for you. So I mean, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Well, there was a couple of things you said, Deanna, that I really want to hit on. And that is specifically like instant gratification. Oh, right? yeah. Everything's so easily accessible. I even see it with my boys. They're 16 and 12. And my oldest, you know, now has a phone and he has a job and he has his own bank account. And we let him set up an Amazon account for when he wants to get something. Or sometimes he'll be like, mom, I added this to your cart on Amazon because I need <laughs> this or like, I want this or I need these shoes for that. And I'm like, Okay. And I just get them. Right. And then we start to accumulate things over time because it's easy to get. And like you mentioned as well, sometimes it's a dopamine hit, right? I love adding to cart, getting it at home. For me, what I really, what I really hear when I hear you talking about that dopamine hit is a habit loop, right? Mm, you yeah. created a habit loop for yourself where like, the cue might be, I'm feeling mad or I'm feeling sad or anxious. For me, it used to be when my husband was out of town for work. That was totally. always my cue. And my routine was, I'm going to hop online and just shop a little in bed from a laptop and look at cute clothes. And then the reward on the other side was like that dopamine hit. Like, I can't wait to have it. But then later I felt guilty. Like, why did I spend all of this money? Like, I work from home and I teach group fitness classes. I wear the same thing. No one's looking except my dog and yeah. like the people I go teach classes to, which I wear the same type of things every time. Like, it's like, why was I doing this? Then the stuff just accumulates, right? It accumulates. And then you're so overwhelmed. You're just so overwhelmed with life in general. You're like, I can't do it. But the mess is making you anxious <laughs> at oh the gosh. same time and yeah. making you feel more chaotic. So yeah. for anyone listening and they're raising their hand, like that's me <laughs> as well. What would be the first step when you want to like declutter or feel more organized in your life? Yeah. I think you start with the area that feels the most chaotic. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of times when people finally say like, okay, this is it. I'm going to declutter. I'm going to get on the bandwagon. The first place a lot of people start is their garage. And I think it's because we feel like the garage is so chaotic and it generally is. It's the dumping ground. It's where everything goes. But I don't like saying the garage first because it's not a project that's going to impact your everyday life. Yeah. Unless you can't park your car in the garage yeah. and you really think you're going to be able to get all get enough out of there that you're going to be able to move your car in the garage and it, you live somewhere it's the middle of winter and you're going to have to you know shovel off your car. But fine, go start there. That's great. That's going to make an impact on your daily life. But if right now is we're heading into, you know, this will air in summer in Northern Hemisphere, you know, you're not going to need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. So let's work on what is going to make it easier for you to get out the door with your kids? Mm -hmm. What is going to make it easier for you to get ready in the morning for work? What is going to make it easier for you to make dinner at night if that's a struggle for you? So you can start making better meals for your family instead of eating out and spending all that money on takeout. You know, what is it that you're what tie it to your goal. What is it that you really want to do? What's your first most important goal to you? And then look at what can I clear away from this space? And then actually be really honest with yourself. Decluttering is difficult. Anybody that tells you it's easy is an anomaly, right? I mean, I'm not that personally attached to stuff and I still find it to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. I have family members that are very sentimental. It is extremely difficult to declutter when you're sentimental or you think 
you know, you're very resourceful and you think, but I might be able to use this someday. Mm -hmm. Please understand the likelihood that if you haven't used it in the last year, you're not going to use it. And then also here's another like thing that's going to come up. If you're one of those people and you hold on to a lot of things and then you finally are like, okay, Deanna, that crazy Deanna girl told me that if I haven't used it in a year, I should get rid of it. You're going to curse me next week. I promise. But it's okay because I'm your friend and I'm the bestie that tells you what you should be doing. Your brain is suddenly going to think of something that you could have used that thing for. Mm -hmm. 100%. -hmm. It will in the next week be like, oh, I should do. Oh, I got rid of that thing. That girl told me to get rid of that thing and I got rid of that thing. And now I want that thing. The only reason you want that thing is because you now know it existed. But if you had kept it in your house, you would not know it was there. You would not have gone and looked for it. And so that is the only reason is because now you're aware of it, right? You had this moment of awareness of like, oh, your brain's like, oh, it was there. And now it's not. So it's okay. Take a breath. Oh, understand that we live in a time and place that if it is super important to you and you can get it, the minimalist rule the um is if you can get something within 20 minutes for less than $20, go ahead and declutter it. Don't spend more time on it because it will be accessible to you again, right? So we can kind of have these moments of like, but I might need it. If it's something that you're going to struggle to get again, then put it off on the side. But if not, and likely we can get everything we need so quickly, Just go ahead and let it go, but focus on the one area that is causing you the most stress on your everyday life, because once you start to get that taken care of, it's so much easier to go to the next place and the next space and keep it small. Do not try to do your whole house. Do one drawer, one corner, one shelf, one desk, one something, and do 15 minutes a day. Hmm. It doesn't have to be an entire weekend where everything's pulled out and you've got piles everywhere and you've got this messy middle and you're like, what did I just do? Mm-hmm. What did I do? <laughs> that sounds like me. Cause my first area is like, I'm going to do my closet and yeah. I am just done because you have to make a huge mess before you're able to organize. It's great once it's done, but halfway through, I'm like, what have I gotten myself into? Like, and I never want to do this again. Yeah. So start small, start with your shirts, right. Or Mm -hmm. your pants or your dresses or your athleisure wear, like start with one category of things Mm -hmm. because that will make it easier. I love that. Well, that really applies to how we talk about health here on the show too. We're like, yeah. not to do it all. Focus on one area, keep it super small. Let's have it hack this. And for a lot of people that seems, especially as women, we kind of have an all or nothing mentality, right? And we're like, I'm really cool. And well, I'm motivated. And then we burn it out and it's too much. And then we just cannot keep it like a consistent habit, right? Yeah. It made me laugh with the garage. My husband keeps such a spick and span garage. Oh. It's just hacks me up. lucky duck <laughs> it always reminds me of like those reels you'll see where like the wife is like cleaning up the home before people are coming over and my husband's out in the garage I gotta straighten my garage out and I'm like <laughs> why um but I like keeping it simple and keeping it as a way that will make it easier for you like I know like kitchen counter can be like a big messy area for me. And that's a really small way for me to feel like, okay, I'm tidying up this little area. It's usually like my kids, like my youngest is a big outdoors type of guy. And he's always got stuff in his pockets and he empties his pockets and puts it on the kitchen counter. So then I'll go and move it to the stairs for him to take upstairs. Then it stays on the stairs forever, but eventually it does get up there. But for me, just starting with that one simple area makes it easy for me to really start the day because I'm the first one up. I go in the kitchen. I let the dog out. I begin some habit loops that I have set around my coffee. And I don't have a mess to look at to make me feel chaotic starting the day. So that's, and I love the rule you said, if you can get it under $20 in 20 minutes, then you can probably get rid of it. Yeah. So a really simple solution for you might be just having a little basket or a bin for Mm -hmm. him to put his things in. And Mm -hmm. then that bin, start to make that the habit of as you get ready for bed, right? It's part of the routine. You just take that bin up with you and then you get it cleared out or, you know, however they want to take care of that in their room. And then that bin comes back down, sits right back on your counter and you do it the next day. 
I love that so much. Mm-hmm. Well, it makes it much more tidy and organized. Like we even like, you know, my husband used to lay his keys on the counter. So we got a little, yeah. I got a cute little hanging <laughs> like basket thing to hang on the end of our kitchen counters. Cause I was like, Oh, it looks prettier and it's hidden in there and it doesn't look as messy and whatnot. So I love that so much. So how do we make this? I know now we're starting with one area. How do we stay consistent with habits of clutter? Because even with health, a lot of times we start strong. We're, you know, we maybe started small. We're feeling good. Like I'm keeping my kitchen counter clean. I'm using the little basket for my little outdoor do- dude. How do I stay consistent and be able to then go on to other areas of my life without it feeling chaotic? Yeah. So I think we've touched on a couple points there yeah. that people don't necessarily think about, but it's just that awareness piece. So again, back to the very beginning thing that I said, Mm. you make it a non-negotiable part of your day. It's just something you do, Mm -hmm. right? It is just, we wash our hands when we come home. It's just something we do, right? Mm -hmm. The moment you come in the door, the first thing we do, take our shoes off, put them on the rack. We go wash our hands. It's a habit, right? After you do it for a while, it just becomes second nature. So tie it to something else you do. So with your, if you're doing that basket, right? You're tying that to, this is your kiddo, right? We're talking about with the basket. You're tying it to his bedtime. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) I didn't want to be like, it's your husband's. You're tying it to his bedtime. (laughs) Okay, babe, time to go to bed. Bring your little basket up. So I'm, I'm supposed to work myself and now stuff. I'm parenting you. No, not going to happen. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Whew, that's a whole different show. <laughs> I love it. Um, But so we're going to tie it to something else, right? So we're going to tie it to when, it, when you're getting ready for bed. One of the things you do, the first step before you go up the stairs is grab the basket, you know, and we just start to make it a non-negotiable part of the day and you can do it incrementally, right? So If the whole idea of taking the basket upstairs, emptying it out, bringing it all back, that's like five steps. (laughs) We really start to break them down. That's a lot to take on at once. Like you said, being really intentional one thing at a time. So maybe the first step is just putting the things in the basket for the first week. Mm -hmm. The next week is taking that upstairs. You know, when you get ready for bed, take it upstairs. The next week is put the stuff in, take it up, empty it out. Then, you know, and so it just starts building on itself. And I'm sure, you know, this isn't, you know, you working on habits and hacking. This is, I'm sure stuff you talk about all the time of just these incremental little changes and steps that can be worked in and it just becomes a non-negotiable. And of course, we're going to forget every once in a while. It's human nature. You know, there's going to be moments where, heck, you know, we go to Disneyland, she falls asleep in the car and she's not going to brush her teeth that night which is a terrible night to not brush your teeth after all the sugar we ate at Disneyland. But that might happen with our kiddo in the car on the way on the ride home. So there's going to be moments of just like, it's okay, Mm -hmm. but just don't have a freak out moment to be like, oh my gosh. And the whole thing falls apart. It's just like, oh, oops, we made a mistake. Just like you would do with your children. Like, oh, learning moment. Oops, we just didn't do it. Don't be so hard on yourself. Cause like you said, with that all or nothing mentality, we as women can get so down on ourselves. We can be so judgmental and we're our own harshest critics. So if we just have a moment of like, oh, oops, I forgot to do that thing. So back to the question, how do we make this happen? We're going to do it small. You're going to pick one thing, right? So maybe you want to concentrate on one room for this week. That's like one of my favorite things to do too, because you can start to see a lot of progress. I am one of those people that I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got this. And then I got this. And then I got that. And then, oh wait, they're over there. I got to do that. Yes. Oh, so yeah. if I can say, I can be intentional. I can say, okay, this week is kitchen week. I'm going to work on decluttering the kitchen. That means each night I'm going to take a different drawer or a different cabinet and I'm going to work in that area. And I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes and I'm going to declutter that. And then I also am going to have a donation box. And if this is kind of a weekly thing, if you're saying like this week, I'm going to concentrate, then maybe you have your box, your donation box sitting in the kitchen for the whole week. If this is like, I'm going to declutter this space today. And this is the only day I had to work on it. Then take that box when you're done with your time period and put it right in your car to donate. Don't leave it in your house. Don't shift it to another room. Don't do the stuff shifting, right? Don't just set it in the garage to be dealt with another day. Because what happens is your brain comes across that box later and is like, 
what is in there? What, what did I put in there? And now you got to look through the box again, Mm. because likely you're not going to donate it without looking in the box. I mean, you could, but most people aren't going to do that because you're going to be like, oh, but what if, what if? Mm. So get rid of that. What if, right? Get rid of that moment of this, like, you know, wondering, don't second guess yourself. You are, you already made the decision, stick Mm. with it. Trust yourself that you made the right decision in the moment put it in your car, drop it off. I like to do a once a week errand day because that also helps me cut down on impulse buys Mm. because I'm also one of those people that hates to spend a large sum of money in one fell swoop. So if I have one day that I do my grocery shopping and run my errands, you know, then it's like, oh, I already spent a good amount of money. I shouldn't buy that extra $10 thing or that extra sweater that I don't need or whatever it is, right? It's harder for me to put that $20 item in my cart if I already have $150 of things in there that I need for our week. Well, and it's not going to be perfect, right? It's not going to be perfect. And you have to give yourself a little grace. And I love being able to get your kids involved and helping them learn, you know, habit stacking techniques, or even like, like you said, just starting with one room and like the kitchen, you weren't like, do all the kitchen in one night. You were like, do one drawer a night. If it helps you, another little habit hack that I automatically thought of that I know I personally would need is do like a tracker, like on your fridge or something and like write out what you're going to do each day and just check it off. I mean, it feels good to check it off and maybe you have a little extra accountability from your family having that hanging on your fridge for them to visibly see as well. Yeah. And they can jump on in and help you too. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> I know it's yeah. not always, it doesn't always work, but it is yeah. interesting to see like when you finally are serious and you commit, I mm-hmm. have seen that time and time again, that the family starts to get on board too. Mm-hmm. Right. Because if yeah. mom's on board, it's so much easier for everyone else to say like, Oh, okay. I see the trains leaving the station. Like I get it now I'm getting, I'm going to get on yeah. because if you say, and you have the habit of like an old bad habit, that we're going to break, I'm going to do this thing and you never follow through. It's really hard to get people on board, right? Mm-hmm. They are, they're like, oh, it's mom's new idea. What? Okay. In a week, it'll be done. Yeah. So commit, right? Really commit. And cause I hear people all the time. Oh, my kids won't, my husband doesn't, they, you know, they're not on board with the cluttering. And I'm like, how on board with decluttering are you? Like, are you really uh-huh. doing your own stuff first? Because mm-hmm. you can never get people on board to do something that you're not willing to do, right? Because do people really want to declutter? No, but it feels so good. The outcome is totally worth mm-hmm. the process. Mm-hmm. It really is. And so if you can get over that first hurdle of, oh, this is something we're actually doing, back to that non-negotiable, it's just something we're going to do. And once you actually start to do it, other people will be on board too, for sure. And I love the habit hacking like tracker yeah. because you will then say, your brain will be like, it's okay. I know there's something over there in that other room. I get that it's driving me crazy, but you know what? That's on my schedule for next week or the yeah. week after I will get there. So it allows you to kind of just take that little piece, turn it off and just say, I will get there and still feel still feel really productive and able to get through the things that are on the list. Because if you're trying to hit all the little pieces, it's so overwhelming and you won't actually get anything done. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, and it's all about just trying your best every day and leaning into how good it feels when you're done. Like actually not just being like, okay, now I'm moving on to the next room or it's like leaning into like stand around your kitchen, open a drawer and like, gosh, this feels so much more calm. This feels less chaotic. And like you said, your kids, your spouse is going to catch on as well that we feel calmer. We feel less chaotic, you know, like they're going to implement habits of decluttering, maybe even their own rooms as well and learning from you and you just showing them how this is a non-negotiable, unconscious thing I do now. Yeah. It's not hard anymore. It doesn't take up a lot of my time. It's just something we do. But getting started with the tips that you've provided today will eventually make it simple and will really provide a lot more calm and less chaos in your home. Yeah, for so, sure. For sure. For sure. So, yeah. And what you said there, I want to point out a couple of things. One, yeah. I'm not about perfection. I actually don't think perfection 
perfection exists, which yeah. I don't know, you know, because again, to me, everything's like a staircase. Mm -hmm. You can't get to the top stair, right? Mm -hmm. Until you take the steps to get there. And you don't actually even realize where that top stair is. Or once you get to the next level, which you thought was perfection, you're like, oh, I actually have a little more to give or my taste has changed, or I'm in a different life stage now. So many different things happen that like where you think the next level is today is going to be different when you get to that next level or when you get to tomorrow. And that's not to say that you shouldn't go for the next level, right? Like don't just say like, oh, well, it's not worth it. It definitely is. But understand that there is a moment of just reality and grace and understanding that it's a growing process. It's not this like end all be all. I'm going to be, when I get to that level, I'll be happy. It's like, no, let's just figure out how we can enjoy the moment and make it so it's not so hard to get to that next level where we want to be. And then when we get there, we'll take a moment and relish it, enjoy it. Yeah, totally mm -hmm. embrace where it is and celebrate all the hard work and effort you put in to get there. And then take a moment and be like, all right, I've still got more to give, or I'm happy where I am right now, or whatever it is for you, but understand that it is okay to live in reality, right? There is not this level of like, I have to be, I don't have to post my house on Pinterest. I talk about this stuff all the time and I don't have this perfect Pinterest house or Insta-worthy life. I mean, I feel like my life is Insta-worthy. It's amazing. I love my life, but am I like, I don't post about all of it online and I don't know. I just have this moment of like, it's, it's real. Like, let's have a moment mm. of just reality and like yeah. live in it and understand that life is messy and, you mm. know, we can do what we can to make it better, but it's, it's okay. And I think that's the fun part about it, right? That's the good bits, the bits that you don't expect. And when you give yourself, when we go through and get rid of the stuff and have this moment to have room to breathe, that's, I think, the good part, right? The part where you get to just be like, oh, okay, like this is good. Like this is fun. <laughs> and that feels so good, right? And you're not done, right? We talk about it all the time. Oh. Like we're, I'm, we don't talk a lot about, we don't talk at all about dieting unless it's from an anti dieting culture. Cause a lot of times we're like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna follow this diet for 30 days and then I'm done. Yeah. And I can go back to eating and like doing nothing like the way it was before. Like, no, it's continuing yeah. on your journey. We call it training for life. And this is just mm -hmm. a lifestyle for you now. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I love it so much. Well, Deanna, where can everyone connect with you, listen to your show, find out all the things about you? Yeah. So my podcast is called Wanna Be Clutter Free. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. So just click on over um, and you can find me there. And my website is the same, wannabeclutterfree.com. And that's my handle on Instagram and all the things. So you cannot miss me. <laughs> I love it so much. Of course, everything will be linked in the show notes for you all to connect with Deanna as well. But my friend, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with us today. It was a pleasure. Absolutely, Emily. Have a great day. Didn't you just love Deanna? Make sure to go follow the link in the show notes to connect with her, listen to her show as well, and start creating some really simple decluttering habits. So let's talk about my top three takeaways. If you didn't know, but behind every interview, I always give my top three takeaways because look, I know you maybe have squirrel brain <laughs> like I do and you're multitasking, you're doing all the things. So I want to give you my top three takeaways. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, you take action. So let's talk about it. Number one, the first thing that comes to my mind is dopamine hits. And that comes from adding to cart. Girl, it is a habit loop. It is a habit loop. Everything is so easily accessible and we're adding to cart, adding to cart. We've created these habit loops for ourselves. where if we want something, you need it, you got it in one day or less, sometimes same day delivery, right? With Amazon, right? It's an actual habit loop. You keep doing it because it feels good and your brain has been wired to crave that feeling. However, you feel not so great on the other side as things just start adding up and cluttering your life. If you find yourself doing this, I want you to go grab my free three-day email challenge, Habit Loop Boot Camp. Over three emails, I help you create some customized habit loops, starting with the trigger. And in this case, 
It might be something like you're feeling insecure. Um, what trigger for me a lot of times is when my husband's out of town, I tend to want to online shop for some reason. And we need to create a new habit to go with that trigger and give you a new dopamine hit instead of adding to cart all the time. You can get that at bit.ly slash habit loop bootcamp is linked in the show notes for you as well. So you have some type of habit loop that's giving you a dopamine hit. You're adding to cart, adding to the clutter in your life. We just got to have it, hack it, girl. Next, make your decluttering habits super small in order for them to stick. Start with just one area like Deanna mentioned, one item. I loved the rule of if you can get it in 20 minutes and under $20, Then it's out of here. It's easy to get back if you really do think you'll need it. I love that tip. And next to that is to track it, right? If you're wanting to start decluttering certain areas of your life, maybe you use a habit tracker and you just say, okay, every day I'm going to declutter one area of my desk. And you just check it off every day. Sometimes we need that data to show us like, look at me, I'm doing it. And it adds up. It's the 1% rule that we teach inside of our programs because it does add up. It doesn't have to be all or nothing, right? And that feels a lot more attainable for us as women. And lastly, your family will follow your lead. Get them on board with decluttering if you are, right? Everyone will notice just how less chaotic and more calm your home is. And just give yourself the grace for all seasons of life that you're in. Your home might find your, you might find your home a little bit cluttered in some seasons and in other seasons you're like, man, I am just killing it. Meet yourself where you're at. Use these tiny habit hacks to help you declutter so it doesn't get to the point where it's so overwhelming that you do nothing. This is going to help you with your mindset and help you feel more clear and lose the chaos, the clutter, and the disorganization for sure. So thank you again, Deanna. I think I'm going to start with my closet in decluttering. I'm going to keep a basket of, just a basket that I put clothes in that I don't wear anymore when I'm in my closet to stock up over time and just donate it when it's full to make it a simple habit for myself. Cause you know, if you go in your closet, it's going to turn into like a two day (laughs) thing and turn into a mess before it gets done. And that can feel very overwhelming. (laughs) So let me know if you're going to implement some of these decluttering habit hacks Deanna shared with us today. I certainly am. So habit, happy habit hacking. Let me know if this was useful and I'll see you later this week. You got this. Hey girl, real quick before you go, if you are ready to take action in creating your own habit loops, then I want to invite you to take the three-day habit loop bootcamp email challenge. You'll learn how to create your own cue, routine, and reward from the Atomic Habits for Women philosophy that we've shared here on the show. And oh, it's also available audio only too. So you can take it on the go while your mom Ubering around town. Just go to bit.ly slash habit loop boot camp. It's linked in the show notes as well to start taking action now. And if you love the show, the biggest way you can support me and other mamas like you is to leave a quick written review so we can help more mamas stop dieting and start training for life via habit hacking. Love and appreciate you.